Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs and back to our Playwright TypeScript series. A quick video on how to launch your browser in the normal mode. It means without incognito mode. So what I'm saying is that whenever you are launching the browser in Playwright, either it is Firefox, Chrome, Chromium, WebKit or any browser, and whenever you are using this method dot launch method and passing, let's see, headless property or channel equal to Chrome or something, by default, it's running in the incognito mode. But what if you really want to run in the normal mode without incognito mode? Because sometimes what happens with the incognito mode, maybe some plugins or some extensions are not getting loaded, right? And then you really want to test your application in the normal mode because your user is not always using the incognito mode. I want to use a normal without incognito mode browser, right? So in Selenium, it's very straightforward that by default, it is always running in the normal mode, but in the playwright, by default, it's running in the incognito mode. For example, if I'm running this particular simple script and uh, I'm launching one Chrome browser, and if you see this incognito, can you see it here? This is incognito here, right? So how to launch without incognito? So what we have to do, when you create the browser instance, so instead of chromium.launch, you have to use chromium.launch persistent context method. You have to use it here. It returns the persistent browser context instance, right? If you uh, see this particular method in their official documentation also, let's quickly go to playwright.dev uh, and uh, search for this particular method. And uh, let's go to this method here. It's return launch persistent context released in version 1.8. And then it says returns a persistent browser context instance. It will maintain the or persist its storage located at the user data directory and everything. And then number of arguments, you can supply it over here, right? You can supply the user data DIER, which will store the browser session data like cookies and local storage and caching information inside this particular directory. And, uh, there are other parameters also you can just supply here. You can supply what is your base URL that also you can do it. Chromium only and then different channel information you can pass. Download path, environment, executable path, HTTP headers. A lot of other things also you can pass like geolocation, latitude, longitude, accuracy, right? So all these are different has touch, has uh, handle, a uh, sig term and handle sig int and all those things. HTTP credentials if you really want to pass. Ignore default arguments and HTTP errors or is mobile Boolean. All these are optional parameters you can supply it over here. So right now what we have to do, we have to supply one extra uh, parameter here like this. See this, this method says that first you have to give me that where exactly you want to store the local storage, the session information about that particular browser. So see, this is the first argument that is what we have to pass that user data DIR in the form of a string path to a user data directory, which stores the browser session data. If you don't pass anything, pass an empty string to use a temporary directory instead. So I'll do one thing. I'm not passing anything. I'm just making it a blank over here and then put a comma. And then you have to supply the normal thing like headless or channel Chrome, whatever the browser that you want to run. So I say that headless is equal to a false in that case. And then again, you can just imply that channel is what the channel is a Chrome here like this. So I want to launch my Chrome browser with the launch persistent context that we have to use it here, which is actually giving me what a browser context instance here. So can I store it in a, let's see one variable that is a browser variable. And the type of this browser variable is actually a browser context is equal to this. And with the help of this browser, I can create a new page and then entering the URL, your rest of the script will remain same here, right? So this is actually in incognito mode. Okay, I'll say open the browser in the incognito mode. Let's see, is it really working or not? So I'm running it and then you see that browser is getting launched in the normal mode, right? Can you see nothing is no incognito return here. Okay, but see, I'll show you one more thing here. I'll make it, let's see 10,000 10, seconds, sorry, 10,000 milliseconds, close the browser. And when you run this, there is one extra window you will see it here. Can you see one blank window? And then it's opening one register account window or whatever your page window is getting open. It's entering the values here. So this is a default behavior of the, of the playwright. When it opens the persistent 
a context, it will always open one default window here. In fact, uh, there is no direct method available where you can resolve it. In fact, I discussed and uh, checked on their platform also in the Git repository also. A couple of people, they raised this particular bug with the playwright. They are claiming that, no, this is a default behavior or the persistent context. We cannot change it here. So that's a unnecessary ugly thing. Unnecessary ugly thing means that unnecessary one extra, you know, tab is getting opened, blank tab. And then in the new tab, it's creating, launching the browser, entering the URL and everything over here, right? So how to resolve this problem? So what we can do it here is, see this carefully, this particular browser, so how many pages are getting open? Two pages are getting open, right? One is a default tab and second one is the actual URL tab. So I'll do one thing from this browser. I can just capture the pages. It means returns all the open pages in the context, right? So just capture all the pages here. And then this pages will give you what? It returns one page array and open pages in the context. So it will return one page array. So can I store inside the let's see another variable, let's see one pages variable that I can store it here. So this pages will behave like an array here. And you can declare if you want to declare that whatever uh, its type of page array. So let's see if I'm declaring with the type of page array if you want to declare, otherwise you can ignore it also here. Now, in this pages, how many windows are there? I mean, how many pages are there? Two, right? So if I say that, okay, what is the size of this particular array? It will be two. It means index will be what? Index will be zero to one. So I'll do one thing. I'll say that from this particular pages, you go to the zeroth one. And then from this particular zeroth one, you have to open the new page, right? That we can do. So I can do one thing that I'm going to create another constant variable. And then I'm going to create one page variable, which is a type of a uh, page here, which is equal to this. In fact, I can just simply remove this line from here. Okay. And I don't need this line. Now from this particular page, I can use a weight and other things like, sorry, a go to method and locator method. I can use it here. All right. So what I'm saying is that in this particular pages array, I'm getting the array sizes too. And I'm saying, okay, you go to the zeroth one, ignore the first one, and then you use one page here. And then from that particular page, you enter this particular URL. This is what I'm saying. Okay. So this is just simple hack. You can do it here if you want to uh, use with the normal mode and uh, let's run it again. So let's see this time it should open only one page, not two pages. Can you see one page? And in this page only it is entering the URL here. I hope this is clear, right? So this is simple. Remember pages will return the array. And from this array, I'm just going to the zeroth one not the first index one. In that case, I'm just ignoring the first index one and then store it in the page variable because this is pages is what? Pages is having two pages. So I'm just creating a variable, page type variable and then entering the URL there. And then after that, my script will remain same. Simple. So like this, we can easily do that. Same thing if you really want to do with, let's see with the Firefox. With Firefox, what will you do? So let's create another browser context with the Firefox. Here I'm writing for the Firefox, what we do? Firefox dot launch persistent context headless for false. No need to supply the channel. Let me just ignore this and then headless false. That's it. And rest of the things will remain same. So let's see, is it really opening the Firefox in the non incognito or non private mode? See, there is no private, no incognito here. Perfect. So this is also absolutely working fine. Same thing. You can use it with the WebKit also. Okay, so this is just a small thing. Remember, whenever you have to launch non-incognito mode or the normal mode, you have to use launch persistent context, right? And one more small thing. See, again, let me just open the Chrome browser once again. This is a blank directory. It means blank space that I have given. It means by default, it will take the storage of the browser and the session of the browser, it will store inside the temporary location. But if you really want to store somewhere in your directory or somewhere at a specific location, let's say I really want to store under this particular uh, project. So I'll say that, okay, you go to my project directory dot forward slash. This is my current project directory. And let's see, I'm writing a session here. It will create one session folder. And under that session folder, all the storage information of that particular browser context, it will be persisted over here, right? So let's quickly run it again. And, uh, it will create one session folder and it's opening in the normal mode here. You can see, and, uh, you can see that, uh, 
Okay, the test got passed and can you see the session folder got created and these are the local state, last version variations and other see caching information, browsing and everything stored over here. Although we are not bothered about it. So that's what I would advise you. Don't download in your uh, local directory or somewhere in this particular project directory. Just simple delete that and uh, just don't use it anything. Just simple make it blank. No need to supply anything here. Just simple pass a blank value or nothing here so that it will always take as a temporary location it will take it this is what I written in the documentation also that pass an empty string to use temporary directory instead okay so i hope this is clear that's all for this video thank you so much and i'll see you in the next video till then take care and god bless you all